Look at this beautiful, rural northern Tennessee. Passing through this area, I read about this old cemetery that's here that I wanted to show you. It has a bunch of these, uh, they're called comb, comb graves. Um, a lot of people call them tent graves. I have never seen these in person. They are interesting, to say the very least. Wow. Look at this. Such a strange design. You can see why people call them tent graves. Put this. I know it's not supposed to be touching the ground, but the stick is not long enough. I don't think the actual reason is known as to why they used to do this and why it was common in, mostly in Tennessee. I think they're found in other areas, but Tennessee, for some reason, there's a, a large concentration of them. And uh, most people imagine that it had to do with making sure that animals could not get in to uh, get into the the bodies you know as they settle as the caskets deteriorate and everything the decomposition happens um, and then some people think it could have been from weather I personally think it probably has something to do with animals or just an aesthetic a different aesthetic maybe I, I don't know I don't think uh, people have been buried like this in quite some time 1934 this is uh, 1894 um, Lieutenant Ledbet Ledbet 1894 1916 I don't know if you can even see that because of the, the way the lighting is here the Sun Nice thing about these people buried here is that they are not alone. They're accompanied by some cows that are enjoying some grazing time. And it's a little hot today, so a lot of them are hanging out under this tree. Nope, he doesn't like me. I thought he'd be a friendly cow. Nope. Look at this one. And then it has an actual tombstone that sticks straight up. And that, interestingly enough, this is all one, this is all solid, all one, one solid piece here. This is uh, J.F. Buckner, died 1907, was born 1872. Hmm. Gee, I wonder where the grave actually is. Because... Now, if you're interested in how these are constructed, you see they have this bolt right here, and that goes all along to the other piece creating that tent and these large pieces of slate or whatever they are sit they rest on that so they're not resting on each other I mean maybe they are in a sense but they're supported really by the metal that metal bar these over here are w much older I don't think there's even any inscriptions on these um, no although oddly enough they have this this might maybe the family at some point made a new a new flat marker and put it in front of this Elizabeth Bowman 
Uh, they didn't even know when she was born. Wow. And died March 5th, 1847. Wife of Josiah Bowman. Parents of 12 children. Josiah donated the land for the Shiloh Cemetery. She was the first person to be buried in this cemetery. So I guess this is called the Shiloh Cemetery. It was my understanding that this was called the Cub Cemetery, C-U-B. Okay, for some reason they're not buried next to each other, but this is Josiah Bowman. He died December 1st, 1864. His is all but falling down here. So they're buried uh, maybe 15 feet apart. She's over here. And from what I've read, there's over 3,000 of these comb-style graves uh, throughout Tennessee and something like 500 different cemeteries. There's so many little cemeteries out here when you get out in these back roads in rural Tennessee. It's, it seems like every couple miles there's a little cemetery. So, I mean... It's possible that most of these small cemeteries, uh, you know, that's where you can find them if you want to go looking for them. Now this one in particular is very small. Maybe two-thirds of the size of the ones that I've been seeing. So I'm wondering, there are absolutely no markers for this. I'm wondering if this was a child. I mean, it's just... Either a child or a very short person. I wish there was some sort of information about it. And now that I'm looking at it, look at the difference in size with these two. The one on the right is uh, probably about seven feet. And uh, this one on the left is maybe around four feet, just over. So, let me see if I can read this. I can't. Um, May 2nd, I guess that said eight, 18, I don't know. I can't read it, but it died 1900. I don't know, sometimes you can read it better on the screen. Here's another cemetery just down the road, three or eh, maybe four or five miles down the road. And um, look at this one here. So they're all about, you know, that typical seven feet. Again, here's another really small one, though. Uh, look at this. It just says <laughs> they never put, they never finished it. Cora. Cora Qualls, born September 18th, 1895. And, uh, doesn't say when, when she died. Strange. Look at this one. This one is probably the smallest one I've seen. This is only about three feet. Uh, again, nothing, no markers, unfortunately. There's nothing on this one. It's a shame. But that dead tree in the middle really gives it a uh, bit of an ominous feel here. This person, only just one year old, 75 to 1876. A lot of kids. Look at this. Look at these are all kids, all children. Wow, there's a ton of them. This one right here, I can't even, let me see if I can read this. 1870, 1870, less than a year old, this one. So many children. Unbelievable. I 
wish, I really wish these had some sort of information, but from what I read, it's quite common that they don't. Look at these, more of these um, very strange, uh, I don't know what you would even call these things. Strange design. What would you call these? Uh, like a, a crypt or a, it's not, you know, I don't know. Not really sure. This one's very legible for being so old. Delilah Ledford Looper, 1790, died 1873. It says wife above it and this one says husband. Magnus Lee Looper, died 1859. All right, well, that's just a small sample of the, what could be as much as 3,500 different comb graves, the, the old tent graves throughout Tennessee. Very interesting. I'm gonna continue on going down these back roads and see what I can find. Beautiful area here and amazing history. See you in the next video.